Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and this is what you need to know about my MBTI type. Or perhaps you don't really need to know it, perhaps you don't care at all. Regardless, this video will show you what you can learn about your personality and yourself by learning what I learned about myself. Now, okay, in this video I will show you my test results, how I identify and how I look at my personality, my cognitive functions, and my strongest abilities, subtypes, and level of development. Okay, so two years ago I used to be a lot more introverted and I used to identify as an INFJ. I said I was an INFJ with an extroverted feeling subtype, right? And that's what I meant with that was that when I was a kid, when I grew up, I was very inclined to philosophy, very introspective, spent a lot of time by myself, tended to avoid the company of others, spent most of my time reading books, and really enjoyed my own independence and alone time. As I grew older, however, I became a lot more outgoing. I started challenging myself to be more outgoing and more extroverted. I started attending conferences, events. I started taking on a more leader-like role in different organizations. And while at first it was very difficult and I was often very stressed and very uncomfortable in these situations, I became more and more comfortable as I went. When I moved to another country, I had to learn to be even more outgoing, to be even more shabby, to be, take more initiative for myself. Otherwise, I'd find myself very isolated in a new world. And so I became more of an extrovert. And these days, I tend to identify much more as an extrovert. And this goes to show that people can change their personality through hard work and effort if they want to. Obviously, there's no reason why you should. And the most important thing is that you're happy with yourself the way that you are. And there are strengths and weaknesses both to being introverted and extroverted. Number two, my strongest intelligence is verbal and linguistic. I've always shown a talent for language. I studied German in high school. I was really good at writing. I took Swedish up to the highest level possible. I would write long novels. I read a lot. I had an extensive vocabulary. I learned English at a very early age. I didn't have to attend English classes because my teachers just said they had nothing to teach me. And this has just kept on going. Today I'm learning Spanish, I also speak Dutch, and in a sense I love languages and I love communication. And that's perhaps why I'm so prolific in the YouTube space. I enjoy blogging, I enjoy writing, I enjoy talking. I consider myself to be a professional blah blah blah, because I can talk about anything forever if I want to. Number three, I identify the most with extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling as my strongest cognitive functions. And I see this in the sense that I tend to be very people oriented. I like everyone. I enjoy being around other people. I enjoy leading and helping others. And of course, I enjoy learning. I enjoy new ideas. I know and enjoy creative discussions with other people. On top of that, though, it's very important to remember that, well, I like being extroverted with my intuition. I don't necessarily consider myself to be an intuitive and perceiving type. And what I mean with this is that I don't consider myself to be the best at coming up with multiple options or ideas. I can, to some extent, brainstorm and think with you and be creative with you. And if I'm around people like that, there is no problem. I can follow along with that. I enjoy being around people that are creative, think outside the box, and it can show me different options and opportunities. What I mean with being strong in extroverted intuition is that I enjoy thinking ahead of what's next. But in general, I tend to think of things in one step at a time, and I tend to focus on one outcome or one goal or one idea that I tend to want to pursue. And instead of that, I tend to not get distracted by new ideas and different options and different possibilities. People will say that I make up my mind quickly, I make decisions quickly, and it's easy for me to make decisions. Well, an intuitive perceiving type will find it more difficult to do so, because intuitive perceiving types see the entire trees in the forest, you know, all of that, all the possibilities. I see, you know, that one tree that we need to pursue, and that one tree that I really want, right? Number four is I test as an ENFJ and I've consistently tested as an ENFJ. I test as outgoing, reasonably outgoing, around 60. I test as uh, very intuitive and very high in openness to experience, around 90. I tend to test as quite agreeable, around 70 or 80. And I tend to test as quite conscientious, around 60 to 70 on conscientiousness. Examples of this is I tend to, in group settings, be comfortable starting up conversations. I tend to lead group discussions. I tend to introduce myself to strangers. I will, for example, yesterday, talk to people sitting next to me in a cafe. 
and I would suggest that we go out for lunch or do have fun things together. I also enjoy the prospect of learning about new things about new people. I enjoy reading about everything. I want to know everything about everything, right? So I'm very inquisitive. I ask a lot of questions, have a lot of ideas and enjoy learning about new things. On top of that, I tend to be quite agreeable and quite a feeling oriented because in general, I tend to prefer harmony. I tend to agree and sympathize with other people. I easily see and understand other people's point of view. I empathize with homeless people and people that I see around me struggling. I tend to be politically involved in different organizations and charities that I find help other people and make the world a better place. I care about the environment and I care about doing the right thing. I tend to see myself as following a strong code of honor and ethics. I tend to care a lot about how I live my life, what I eat and how I eat and being a healthy person. I also consider and want to treat other people with respect. I rarely or if ever get angry at other people. I tend to be described as calming to be around. I tend to be understanding and I like to make sure other people feel safe around me. In terms of conscientiousness, I keep lots of lists and Excel documents around. I make long-term plans. I tend to be quite comfortable, not just coming up with an idea, but also executing it, turning it into a project, turning it into a plan and then following through on it. I tend to be a bit overambitious and set often goals that are impossible to reach or to take much longer than what I anticipate. But on the whole, I try to be consistent. I try to follow through on promises. I sometimes overpromise, but in general, I try to meet commitments as much as possible. I'm rarely late, if ever, and often I'm early. I want to make sure that I follow the process that I set out for myself as well as possible. I kind of keep myself true to my own word. And that's also how my honor comes true in a sense. Like I want to make sure that, you know, if people, if I say something, people can trust me. I want make, to make sure that people trust me. In terms of assertiveness and neuroticism, I consider myself to be quite assertive. I rarely have mood swings. And while certainly I can have dips of energy or sometimes feel a bit I'm confident in myself or wonder about things or doubt myself. On the whole, I tend to speak out to myself what I believe in, what I think is right. And I pride myself on pushing my own boundaries and working hard and doing the right thing. Number five, as you might hear from what I say, I know myself quite well. People have questioned and challenged my self-perception many times. Some say I'm an ISFJ, some say I'm an ENTP, some say I'm an ENTJ, some say I'm an INFJ, some say I'm an ISTP or ISFP, right? But ultimately, I know myself best and I have spent a long time getting to know myself and learning about myself. And I think while people might see snapshots of me online and Perhaps they practice different systems and perhaps they look at things from different lenses. Ultimately, I think we should give each other the benefit of the doubt sometimes. And if you're dealing with a person that has taken extensive tests, has worked hard on themselves, has studied themselves a lot, you should kind of trust them on their word and how they see themselves. And you should be willing to second guess yourself. Well, he looks like this or he acts like that, but he... If he's really put a lot of effort into this and if he really knows this much and has really spent this long, he probably knows more than what I know. And perhaps what I see on YouTube or what I see in this brief blog post or this brief comment or on this quick snapshot isn't the full picture of a person, right? In general, I was described as a gifted kid in school in the sense that I learned quickly. I got to skip grades. I got to try new things. I got to read ahead. I got to, you know, take extended literature and got advanced challenges. And beyond that, I enjoyed self-study. I read a lot. I got into philosophy at a young age. I was very interested in physics. I was interested in maths. And I really enjoyed most subjects. I didn't really have one subject that I struggled with because I really enjoyed all of them and found it really fun and very stimulating. I love to learn and I love to challenge myself. And, you know, I'm also very diligent in the sense that uh, even if I find something difficult, I work through it. I keep working at it and pushing myself. And when I feel like I'm struggling with something, I want to do it more because it becomes more exciting to me. And so... In general, I push myself and sometimes I push myself too hard, right? So one common problem that I've had in my life was that I would take on two big projects, two big goals, and I'd work myself too hard and forget to watch my own needs, watch my own boundaries and 
what's what's important to me right so here you can notice that perhaps if i was a little bit more introverted a little bit more perceiving perhaps a little bit more realistic perhaps a little bit more logical in how i approach things perhaps i would be able to note this when i was taking on more than i could chew or if i was pushing myself too hard or if i forgot myself or forgot to you know really in a sense uh think about my own freedom my own balance my own emotional health and that's very important too right mm -hmm. beyond that i would say that these days i tend to have kind of a systems view of life and that can mean something very important right so we have to consider the aspect of development maturity and growth right when people get older often if they live complex lives and challenge themselves and reflect on life and learn from what they're doing and what they're struggling with people grow up to have a more advanced and more complex view of life and what life is and how it works and i tend to today have kind of a systems view of life when i was younger if i saw somebody around me that was struggling i had to help them i had to be the person to fix their problems i had to do the right thing right these days i can detach a little bit more from other people around me and their problems of course if i can i want to help and i'd offer to help but i try to approach it as a systems issue which means that you know it's not just about me or it's not just about you it's about what we all do together and everyone has a different role to play and i see it quite multifaceted you know we're all different everyone has a different personality everyone has different skills if we can work together we can solve those problems together and if one person tries to take on all of the problems of the world alone you know that person is going to burn themselves out and perhaps they're going to do more harm than good and so the most straightforward solution to problem solving is not always the right one and so in a sense i don't always engage in very stereotypical expressions of a country I will not always, you know, take the most uh, simplistic, you know, approach to how to do something. I'll stop for a second and realize that, you know, this behavior, this pattern that I have, this action that I do, you know, or used to do in the past doesn't work the way I want it to. And so I'm going to have to find secondary strategies or alternative strategies that can work better. And so in that sense, I am a little more hesitant today to help everyone around me or to support others. And I am a little bit more modest in how I approach things and a little bit more humble in what I'm capable of. I recognize that I'm just one person and that I only have a small role to play in the world. And I'm quite content with that. I will never learn everything about everything. And I'm content to just learn something. And so I've noticeably sized down a lot over age. And these days I've also accomplished a lot and I feel quite happy with what I've accomplished so far in my career, in my work and on YouTube. And in that sense, I'm quite happy with that. And so in that sense today, I'm much more open to just being a mentor, inspiring person or a role model to other people too. And I don't really need to be the number one or the top shot anymore. Anyways, that's me. What's you? What are you? What kind of person do you feel like? How do you relate to what I said in this video? How far along are you in the process of getting to know yourself? Thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and see you all in the next video.